Hello, welcome to SmartBoard 101. My name is Robert Rocha, and I'm an Instructional Technology Specialist with the El Paso Independent School District. In our last segment of SmartBoard 101, we discussed about how to start using your SmartBoard in your classroom, all the things that you needed to, to get it started in your classroom as far as uh, connecting your SmartBoard, getting familiarized with the different setups and so forth with the SmartBoard. And we also talked about Smart Notebook, the really powerful software that goes with it as far as how the layout and where the tools can be found within the Smart Notebook. But now you may ask yourself, okay, I, I, I got my Smart Board connected to my classroom. I know what the Smart, board, uh, smart Notebook layout's going to be. But what's going to be next? What, what happens next? How do I start using the board with actually within my class? Well, the first thing I want to mention to you is that when you start using technology in your classroom, you've got to become familiar with it and realize that some things don't work all the time, and it's, if they do, that's great. If they don't, that's great. If they do, we just kind of work through all those different items that, that happen with our smart board. Now, as I look at my smart board here, I go back to my computer screen. Now, again, I have a smart screen overlay. I don't actually have an actual board in my classroom here, or my little studio. But the, the, again, the principles are still the same upon when you actually use the board. And the best way is just to use it as a whiteboard. Let's get you a little com comfortable with how to actually using, using it as a writing tool and so forth. So how do I do that? How do I start using it as an interactive whiteboard uh, like what I have in my no normal class? So what I'm going to go ahead and do is on my, my computer screen here, I'm going to click on the Smart Notebook 10 icon. I'm going to open up Smart Notebook. So I just do a double click there, and it's going to open up here in just a few seconds here. Now, like in our last segment, it has different areas here, my white environment, my tools, and my tabs that are located on my left. What I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to go and I'm going to click on this screen here that has, let me get my pen here, let me get my pen to show up. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to circle, well, I can't, it actually won't let me circle it right there, unfortunately, but I want to click on the icon that's the picture of the monitor and with the triangles pointing up on the side. So when I click on that, it takes me to a full screen. And so now I actually have uh, like a giant interactive whiteboard. I can start using writing it, writing all the, my different notes to my class and so forth. So all I would need to do to activate a pen is if I ha on my pen tray, I can simply pick any of the pens that I have. However, if I go to my full screen monitor here, I've got a little floating toolbar. And on that toolbar, I have in the middle here, I have three little dots. When I collect on those three dots, it pulls up a menu screen of all the different tools that would be found on the actual toolbar. Like for instance, I can insert a blank page. I can add a screen shade if I wanted to hide my notes temporarily. I can also have a select tool, which means being back to the cursor. Uh, I have my different pens I can use. So here I got my different colored pens, different highlighters that are there. Uh, when I click on my calligraphic pens, uh, I have different colors. Now you may say, well, you know, hey, the calligraphic pens look like the regular pens as far as the color schemes are available to you. What the calligraphic pens actually do is it helps to smooth out your writing on the board. So if you're, if you're going to be writing a lot of notes, I would choose the calligraphic pen. That way it smooths it out and it lo looks a lot ne neater within your, your lesson plans that you have, your, your assignments. I also have my creative pens that I have. If I want to mark things off, put a check mark or a star on something. I have these different colors I can use. And of course, my friend, the eraser, is always going to be there. And of course, it comes in three different sizes that I can go ahead and use. Um, if I had to draw some lines, if I needed to make a chart on the fly, I have uh, lines that I can go ahead and make a chart with. I can add shapes. If I needed to use like tan grams or something, I wanted to make some tan grams, I can have my different shapes there. I uh, also have a fill if I wanted to fill things up, but I don't want to right now. Let me go back to my beam cursor here. Um, and text, if I wanted to start typing some words up, I can go and type some words up on my actual screen board. And of course, that magic pen is, a la is the greatest pen that's there. It allows you to have disappearing ink. It allows you to magnify different things within your, your, your whiteboard environment. So people in the back, if they wanted to uh, just can't see something, you can uh, use the magic pen draw a square around it, and it'll actually cause the, the, the picture to expand and enlarge it and so forth. So that's the neat thing that's there. So here, I'm going to go and grab a pen. And I might just choose my calligraphic pen. That's going to be the easiest one here to use. I'm going to choose that one right there. And now I can use my finger, or I can grab my pen if I wanted to. I'm going to just start writing. I'm going to type in the word, uh, type in our acronym EPISD. 
And of course, I don't have the best handwriting. I have always, uh, when I was younger, always had writing kits sent home to me. But uh, it never seemed to improve. But you can, as you can see now, I go and have all my different writing skills that I have. I can write things out and show, display it to my students. Now, as I'm writing and as this gets filled up, I want to be able to add it, insert a page. I want to go and add another page to this. Well, how do I do that? Well, I'm going to go back to my floating toolbar, click on my three little dots, and I'm going to go to insert a blank page. Now, notice I haven't changed my pen. So as I start writing, I'm still writing here. I, let's say I'm going to go ahead and type in uh, TV Studio here, or write in TV Studio. I'm still going to be I'm still going to be that pen until I choose to be something else. So if I needed to click on something or if I wanted to uh, highlight something, I have to go back to my toolbar up here and then actually go to being my select tool. And now when I touch here, I'm being back to being a cursor. So that's one thing I always remember about. OK, so you may say, ask yourself, OK, that's great. I can kind of use that. But um, is there anything else to that as far as is it? Uh, can it, can it add anything more to my classroom? Well, the answer is yes, because one of the great things about using the SmartBoard as, as an interactive whiteboard is if I go back to being a regular screen here, you can see as I look at my tool, t uh, my tabs right here, I have all the different slides that I created of all my notes. So now that actually adds to your classroom management. So now you were able to uh, store and save all the notes that you did for that day. And as I focus up here and I click on my very first page, you're going to notice up there it says October 24th at 9, uh, 9, 10 a.m. It automatically puts the current date and time of when you created that slide. So if, for instance, if you wanted a student was absent that day, you could save all of your different notes that you created and you can actually print that out and give it to your student, let even them know uh, what you covered that particular day. Or if you had an administrator come in and wanted to know exactly uh, what you did that day, here you have a great file of everything that you've uh, done. If you had done this on, interact on a regular whiteboard, it would have been erased and all your notes would have been gone. So everything now is preserved. And so you can always go back, and this is, again, a great for review at the end of your nine-week grading period. You can always go back and say, hey, what did we do on our, our, our second day of the nine weeks? So you can go and click back and see all the different items that you had went over and that you uh, went over with your class. So that's a really key thing. So now that I have that here, I want to be able to save that file. If I wanted to save these particular files uh, that, I've, that I've done here, all I would simply do is go to my toolbar and go to File and go to Save As. And I've already named this one called Classroom Notes. And if I'm going to go and put Classroom Notes 1, let me know that I kind of modified my different notes that are here. And I'm going to click on Save. And as I go down and, and I minimize my screen, I can now see on my desktop I have Classroom Notes 1. So I can always go back and refer that particular notes to my student or my administrator or to myself if I ever go, go back and refer to that. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up here. And as you can see, it's in use. I got a little error message. That's OK. Go back to here. And now there are my different notes that I have. Well, that's pretty much going to be a wrap for today, and thank you much for joining us on SmartBoard 101.